Okay, uh, here I want to talk a little bit about parenting styles. In attachment, we already talked about how the social interaction between the parent and the child um, will affect their child's attachment. But that's not the only way the parent affects the child. The, ch the parent's parenting style can also affect the child's personalities. And so I want to focus on two um, variables uh, that uh, affect a parent's parenting style. That is, how good they are at bonding and how good they are at controlling their child. Some parents are very warm. They seem to enjoy their child's company. They want to hug them and kiss them. They want to give them high fives and say, great job, and you're a special little kid. And some parents just aren't good at that. They tend to be colder. And this parent is not good at saying good job. And they're not good at hugging and kissing. And maybe they just don't really enjoy their child's company. It doesn't necessarily have to be that they don't like their child, but they don't really know how to um, uh, be warm to their child. Now, for parental control, some parents are good at controlling their child. They have rules. They express those rules to the child so the child knows them. And if the child breaks the rules, there are consequences. Um, and some parents are not good at that. They either don't have rules or they don't have consequences or there are rules, but they never tell the rules to the child so the child doesn't really know them. Um, and so when you combine these two things, uh, it creates four types of parenting. And the first one I want to talk about there, you see it with the star, is authoritarian parenting. The authoritarian parent is rather cold. They are not good at saying, good job, and I love you, and high five, and what a good little kid you are. They don't do that well. But what they do well is that uh, they're good at controlling their child. There are rules, there are consequences, and the child knows what the rules and consequences are. Um, for the child, uh, that tends to mean that this child knows how to follow rules. If you're a teacher or you work at a daycare or with other children, you tend to love the kids from authoritarian parents. They don't talk a lot. They follow the rules. Um, they don't talk back. Um, but there are problems that develop here. This kid is probably going to lack social skills. Why? Because they're not used to interacting with mom and dad except by following the rules. Um, and so they don't really know how to interact with their friends. Um, and so they're going to be more shy, um, more reclusive, more introverted. They often show poor initiative. They don't do things on their own. Why? because they always wait for mom and dad to tell them what to do because they don't want to get in trouble. And so now at school with friends, they don't take initiative. And so um, they don't get things done until they, they're told to do them. They often compare themselves with others. And uh, sometimes they show hostility and fear, right? If you live in a house where the only time an adult talks to you is to tell you you did something wrong, you tend to get very upset, and sometimes you have a lot of hostility, and it's very easy for you to get angry. Or the opposite, you become very fearful and very shy, and you let people walk all over you. Now, um, there are different reasons why people are authoritarian in their parenting. Sometimes it's very simple. Mom and dad work a lot, they're not home a lot, and so they don't have the energy to hug and kiss and explain every little rule. And so it, it becomes easier to just sort of yell at the child and punish the child all the time. But sometimes it's very cultural. If you're from a Latino family, a Middle Eastern family, an Asian family, a lot of these cultures value authoritarian parents more. Why? Because authoritarian parents raise children who follow the rules and do as they're told. And in those cultures, um, uh, people value 
uh, uh, children especially, but even adults who follow the rules and do as they're told. Um, and so uh, a lot of cultures value authoritarian parenting more than any other. Now, um, the authoritative parent tends to be the kind of parent that uh, we value in the Western world, in America, in Western Europe, Australia. Um, why? Because this parent is good at doing both things. They're good at being warm, saying I love you when you're the greatest and high five, but they're also good at uh, having rules and expressing them to the child and having consequences. So what ends up happening is that this child tends to be self-confident, socially competent, they're self-reliant and responsible. They know the rules, they know what's expected of them, not just from mom and dad, but also with their friends. And so they are better at relationships. They're better at interacting with teachers. They do things without being told what to do, the right things without being told what to do, because uh, they tend to have a lot more self-esteem and they value themselves as well. And because we value these kinds of people, people who are self-reliant and competent and responsible and self-starters, well, in our culture, we tend to value authoritative parenting a lot more. Now, some parents are very permissive and uh, not a lot of cultures prefer a permissive parent, uh, but some parents are very permissive because they believe that children should be allowed to enjoy life. And so these parents are very warm and they're very good at saying, I love you and you're the greatest little kid and high five, but they're not very good at having rules. And so uh, sometimes they have rules, but there's no consequences. And so the child ends up learning that there are no consequences. And so this kid tends to develop poor social competence. Um, they are never quite sure why people are upset with them and they uh, don't know how to respect others. Um, they don't know how to hear no from others. They'll often throw tantrums and things like that. Oftentimes, this child who was rather spoiled, as they get older, they're going to uh, eventually learn to um, interact with the rest of the world. The rest of the world isn't going to allow them to be spoiled. But especially during childhood, um, in elementary school and middle school, they're going to have a lot of issues with adults and friends. And then finally, we have the neglectful parent. And the neglectful parent is bad at both things. They're rather cold and they have low control over the child. And usually there's a reason for this. It's not always a good reason, but there's a reason for it. Maybe mom and dad are um, drug addicts or alcoholics, so they just really don't pay enough attention to the child. Maybe mom and dad work three and four jobs and they don't have time to interact with the child. Or maybe somebody else in the family is sick and the parent um, gives so much attention to the one sick child or family member that they don't really pay attention to the other children. What ends up happening is that this parent is not there for the child. They don't say good job. They don't say I love you. They don't say you're the greatest little kid. And they also don't have rules or consequences for the child. And this kid often feels that the parent doesn't care about them, that the parent cares more about that other thing in their life than they care about them. This kid is also a lot less socially competent. Um, they often get in trouble almost on purpose um, to get attention sometimes. They handle independence poorly. And so as soon as there's not uh, someone looking after them, they start doing things that get them into trouble. And they often have poor self-control. Uh, the neglected child does the worst throughout childhood and throughout um, uh, even adulthood. They tend to get in trouble more. Their life tends to be more difficult, um, just sort of in general. <laughs>